I am Dr. Mill ATN, Associate Dean for Student Affairs at the NYMC School of Medicine. I graduated from New York Medical College in 2002 and went on to do my neurology residency at Columbia University, where I also completed a fellowship training and a master's in public health. I am now a neurologist specializing in epilepsy and brain injury medicine. I work for Bon Secours Neurology, part of the Westchester Medical Center Health Network. I also see patients at Good Samaritan Hospital, and I staff the neurology resident clinic at Bradhurst. As you know, in recent months across the United States and around the world, many have been protesting the many injustices against people of the African diaspora that have existed for far too long. We have been urged to say the names of victims such as Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and George Floyd. This last murder really hit home for me because I grew up next door and I have been very good friends with Sharon and Andrew Floyd, beloved first cousins of George Floyd. Our hurting community has spoken out and have been joined by decent people everywhere to stand up to these injustices. These protests have made their way to the halls of the ivory towers, and we have found that there has been increased interest in education and research regarding health disparities. At the same time, the importance of diversity, inclusion, equity, and belonging has risen to the forefront of consciousness of students and faculty at academic institutions across the country, including here at NYMC. The data is clear that people who have a sense of inclusion and belonging have better performance at work, stronger performance in school, and better health outcomes. Part of our mission here at NYMC is to make sure our graduates are best equipped to provide healthcare to the increasingly diverse communities in the United States. In order to understand health disparities, one must understand the impact that racism, sexism, religionism, homophobism, transgenderism, classism, xenophobism, and many other isms have on the practice of medicine. We will teach our students to combat this negativity with what I, what I like to call the good isms. That includes professionalism, altruism, and humanism. It is worth noting that NYMC has an unusual history in this area. Our School of Medicine began admitting women within three years of our founding, and a black woman was the valedictorian of the class of 1870. Our School of Medicine established a scholarship which could only be awarded to a black medical student in 1928, and the first recipient was a woman. A few years ago, our School of Medicine had the highest percentage of URM students of any historically majority school in the US. We are very proud that our clinical teaching takes place in hospitals and clinics which serve a diverse patient population with a significant amount of patients from underserved communities. We cannot, however, rest on our laurels. I will now briefly outline some of our efforts to build upon our history and move forward. We are piloting a course for faculty members on multiculturalism and medicine. This is a semester long course that will go over key principles with faculty, including the role of implicit bias and microaggression in patient care in interaction with colleagues, as well as interaction with students. This includes going over implicit bias in grading and techniques to make all students feel that they belong in your classroom or your clinic. In this day and age, it has become quite clear that it is not enough to not be racist, but rather it is important that we are anti-racist. To that end, the medical school has established an anti-racism and bias in medicine task force that is assisting the education and curriculum committee to develop and incorporate more meaningful changes to the curriculum at NYMC particularly with regards to creating a more inclusive environment. These changes will be instrumental in allowing us to lead the way when it comes to diversity and inclusion medicine and healthcare. We are offering an online course for our students called Finding Your Voice. This will teach students the fundamentals of how to craft an op-ed article for the popular press and therefore make their voices heard in the national dialogue. Thank you to Jennifer Reichert for leading this effort. We recently welcomed a new class of students to NYMC. And as part of that welcome, we had all the students 
go through implicit bias and microaggression training. This type of training is not a one and done, but rather will need to be ongoing throughout the four years of medical school. This very important training was spearheaded by the leadership of the NYMC chapter of the Student National Medical Association in collaboration with the School of Medicine Office of Student Affairs. Thank you very much to all the students who stepped up and provided this important training to the M1s. We have worked with Ms. Marie Asher, the director of the Health Sciences Library to create a journal club where we will read books related to health equity, diversity, and inclusion so that members of the NYMC community who are interested in having a deeper dive into this area will have that opportunity. The first book we will be reading is entitled How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. NYMC leadership is working diligently to establish a more robust Office of Diversity and Inclusion for the NYMC campus. And we are working with student groups on the campus to make sure that we are providing the appropriate services for our students who are underrepresented in medicine. I am pleased to inform the campus community that Dr. Yvonne Thornton has joined our team as a student mentor and advisor. Dr. Thornton was the first black woman to be board certified in maternal fetal medicine in US history. If her name sounds familiar to you, it may be because her autobiography, The Ditch Digger's Daughter, was featured on The Oprah Winfrey Show. We hope to announce additional personnel hiring soon. Additional efforts include reaching out to our alumni who are underrepresented in medicine so that we could foster a stronger connection between those alumni and our current students. Lastly, it is well established that the doctors who are most likely to provide care to underserved communities are the doctors who are underrepresented in medicine. In order to make sure we have more physicians serving these vulnerable communities, we are also focusing on the pipeline to get more URMs into the health professions. We are working with student groups to mentor both high school and college students to expose URMs to the various health professional fields and also helping them to increase their competitiveness to apply for admissions. We have many other plans, but I just wanted to share a few key initiatives with you so that you can know that NYMC is fully committed to taking the steps to make our environment more diverse, more inclusive, and to make sure that everyone who is part of the NYMC community understands and feels that they belong here. Thank you for your attention.